Agrivoltaics is the combination of agriculture and photovoltaics, or PV, solar PV panels. The field of agrivoltaics is really a brand new emerging field where we're better understanding how the partial shade from solar panels creates a different microclimate and allows crops to grow in a different way than how they would if they were under the open air. Bees are probably the closest thing in nature that you can find to a mythical creature. You actually see the magic happening. I see agrivoltaics as a very clear mechanism for how you can save the family farm. My grandfather, Jack Stingery, is the one that purchased our family farm back in 1972. And so for the past 50 years, it's mainly been hay production. He passed away in 1980 here on the farm. And then the land transitioned over to my mother, Eloise Kamenak, who currently owns the farm. I grew up coming out here on the summers, but I never really did much around the farm. So after a career overseas, I moved out to the family farm to figure out more about what it was like to be out here on this land. I found out that the haying that we do on the land, it made almost enough money to pay off our property taxes, plus water rights, plus utilities, so not even enough money to go to the grocery store. That just didn't seem right that 24 acres in Boulder County did that. so. We wanted to figure out what else we could do with the land. We came across the idea of community solar. Community solar basically means that a community can get together and own infrastructure that, that produces solar power, sell that into the local utility, and then they have to have at least 10 different people saying that they will purchase that power from that community solar garden. It's a community project because members of the community, uh, local businesses, other folks that are, that are interested are able to buy a share of the output that comes out of this, and that serves as their source of solar energy generation. The first major roadblock was that Boulder County Land Use Code didn't allow for solar over a certain size to be on farmland. So we spent over a year working with the land use department to change the land use code so that we could actually build a solar array on our farm and also at the same time open it up for over 50 farms across the county that could do the same thing as us. So we didn't actually change the zoning of our land, we're still agriculture, we just changed the land use code so that now we could incorporate solar in with our agriculture. We have uh, just over 1.2 megawatts of DC plate solar panels. Yeah, that covers just over four acres of land with the solar panels. If you include the other solar array infrastructure, that's about five acres total of impacted land and that sits on a field that's uh, eight acres in size. We produce enough power for about 300 homes in the area, uh, standard Colorado homes. The electricity from our solar array just goes into the Excel Energy electricity grid like water into a lake. All the water droplets would be dispersed throughout the lake just as all the electrons that we produce gets dispersed throughout the electricity grid. I lead the National Renewable Energy Lab's INSPIRE project. One of my key areas of research is agrivoltaics. Agrivoltaics is the combination of agriculture and photovoltaics, or PV, solar PV panels. The field of agrivoltaics is a really a brand new, really exciting emerging field where we're better understanding how the partial shade from solar panels creates a different microclimate and allows crops to grow in a different way than how they would if they were under the open air. We have over 25 different field sites that are located across the country. So agrivoltaics could work theoretically on any farm in any location. Jack Solar Garden is unique because it is the largest dedicated agrivoltaic research site in the country. It allows us to look at crop production, pollinator habitat, ecosystem services, and pasture grass all in the same location. On top of that, we also have the ability to compare how different panel heights, whether it's six foot or eight foot, affect the performance of the vegetation underneath the panels. 
we are just scratching the surface in terms of characterizing all the different types of benefits and all the different types of configurations that could lead to greater food resiliency and greater energy security across the country. We need more agrivoltaic systems built. We need more agrivoltaic farmers. We need more agrivoltaic researchers. There's a lot more we need to learn.